Hey guys, I don't know if anyone has ever done this before. I'm guessing probably because we are on the internet and nothing is truly original on the internet, but I wanted to try repainting something I did a while ago to see how much I've actually improved since I started working in watercolor. Kind of like the draw it again challenge, but with paints. I chose Sailor Pluto because she was the first watercolor painting I ever did on this channel, and I think she was my second or maybe my third painting ever. I originally drew her for Inktober of last year, so that was October 2017, and then I fixed up her line art a bit before I finally painted her. The painting was finished on November 22nd, 2017, and it took me about three hours, I think, based on the raw footage I still have in storage, but I did forget to film the background, so tack on probably another hour or so for that. As soon as I finished her, I knew I could have done better. I'll do some proper comparisons at the end so you can see, but the original painting had this inconsistent lighting, the background was super weak, and overall it just wasn't as good as it could have been. It wasn't even something you could blame on the paint quality. I used my Sennelier La Petite Aquarelle palette, which are pretty nice paints for student grade, and I used Fabriano Artistico paper, which is not exactly cheap, and it's good paper. I just, I didn't really know what I was doing. The line art does feel super dated, and it's kind of wonky in the anatomy department, since it has been over half a year since I finished it, but I didn't want to change anything so it would be easier to make a proper comparison between the new and the old pieces. So it's the exact same line art, I think printed at more or less the exact same size. I did add a thicker line around everything to try to make it pop more, but I'm not sure if it really helps or not, especially since I, at the end, I add like a white line around everything anyway. In case you've never seen one of my watercolor videos before, or actually I'm not sure if I've discussed this in a while, but I actually draw and ink my line art using Procreate 4 on my iPad Pro. I then print it using my Epson Workforce printer. It takes Epson's Durabright ink, which is incredibly waterproof, and as far as I can tell, it's immediately waterproof. I will sometimes use my hair dryer to try to heat set it just in case, but I'm not really sure if it makes a difference or not, because I don't really know if hair dryers are really that great for heat setting ink. I stretch my art by soaking it in water for about five minutes before I staple it to this watercolor artboard I have, and I've never had the ink run even then. I use the rear feed to print on 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm not sure if it could handle anything thicker, but it is supposed to be able to print on envelopes, so I suppose it's possible. It will still warp if the entire paper is wet, but that's because I really suck at stretching my paintings so they're perfectly taut. I think I'm like, I'm too delicate with the paper and I really don't need to be. Also on the topic of stretching, I actually used the exact same technique for stretching this piece this time as I did originally. The paper is different though. As I mentioned, I used Fabriano Artistico and it was the hot press paper the first time, while with this one I used Arches Cold Press, or Arche if you're French I guess. I originally thought hot press was ideal for my style of illustration because I thought that with hot press you could add your own texture and that things would look a lot smoother but I've actually learned that cold press gives way better water control, I find I get better blending, and I find I actually kind of really like the texture of cold press, especially with the Arches brand in particular. I did start this painting differently from the old one. Previously, I used masking fluid to mask off the figure itself, and then I did the background so I wouldn't get any of the splashes and stuff on Sailor Pluto. With this piece, I masked off the background to focus on the character first. Though, to be honest, I really don't know why I did it that way this time. With the original piece, I didn't have any issues with going outside the lines, except when it came to the back bow, which 
ironically enough, also ends up outside the lines in the new version, even with the masking fluid. Kind of funny how that happened, actually. With the original painting, I think I was trying to do some kind of a mix between a cell shaded and a blended style, but it just came out looking really messy and confused. I also think I scrubbed the paper too hard so the paint dried really blotchy, which you'll see in the comparisons. Not to mention the shadows feel very flat because I didn't think to shade things with a different color instead of a vaguely darker version of the color I used, if that makes any sense. Which is fine in some cases, but often the shadows can add mood and ambiance to the piece even if it is just a lady in a super short skirt floating in space and time. I used anthraquinoid blue to shade this piece, and it worked fine, but I find Mgram's anthra blue lifts really easily. I've even gotten it all over my fingers before, just on my swatches. Maybe it's just me, but when I started working on the background, I ended up with some of the blue reactivating with the water and then ending up in the background, which wasn't a big deal because I knew I would be layering it with moon glow, which does have blue in it. I'm not sure if this is the same with any other version of this particular pigment. Anthraquinoid blue is also known as Indian Throne blue in a lot of other brands, such as Daniel Smith. I will say that Holbein's neutral tint does not budge once it is down, which is what I used for the initial background salt wash before I layered the moon glow on top, which I forgot to film. Which is sort of like history repeating itself since I forgot to film the first painting's background too. Honestly though, I am so messy with backgrounds that you really aren't missing anything. It's probably pretty cringy to watch. Another difference from the original to the redo, I use silver ink on her staff, which is the garnet rod, and I use red metallic paint on the garnet orb part, which is that thing that's floating above her hand, which I think does make them look flat in the scan, but they look really pretty and sparkly in the original. I also added red metallic paint to her earring and to her eye, because... I love it when my paintings look like they have glowing red demon eyes, it's great! I did film, but then cut the footage where I added the white line around Sailor Pluto because it did not go well. My Posca white paint marker decided to die. Did it run out of paint even though it's really not that old? Did the salt wash ruin it somehow? I have no idea what happened to it, so I switched to my Uniball Signo gel pen because I knew it was incredibly opaque. And, well, gel pen works great on smooth surfaces, but it does not go down super nice when it has to dodge over the bits of salt that didn't come up with your palette knife when you removed the salt from your salt wash. It was an ordeal, and I'm still not super keen on how the lines came out, even after editing it to try to make them look smoother. So I don't want to cut anything else or speed up the painting process too much so it's incomprehensible, but I also don't want to ramble forever about the same things, so I'm going to let you chill with some music for a few moments, and I will be back with the finished art to compare it to the old piece. So now that we've discussed how I did the new piece, let's take a look at side-by-side -side comparisons so you can see the difference between the old and the new versions. So let's start with the background, since I think it's one of the more dramatic differences. In the old version, I used Payne's Gray and Salt to create this kind of vague glowing effect around Pluto herself. 
I think I was trying to create the mist effect that you see when she's at the gates of time or whatever it's called. In the new version, I tried to give the impression of the garnet orb glowing instead. I do regret not adding highlights to her skin and clothing to really sell the effect, but I still think it's a huge step up from the kind of bland feel of the original. The colors overall on the old piece look mottled and blotchy, and they're also way more saturated than they need to be. The blacks are deeper than the new version, but I also don't think they need to be that dark because they just look really muddy. I remember I also couldn't get the right maroon brown color for her back bow in the original. It ended up way too pink, but the new version is a warmer red. It's still not quite maroon, but again, I didn't want anything on the new piece to be too dark. I really love this new version. I think it's a huge improvement, and I finally feel like I've done Sailor Pluto, my absolute favorite Sailor Senshi, justice. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. I create new art videos every Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!